Welcome to Good Game, I'm Bajo. And I'm Hex. Well, if it looks like Dark Souls, plays like Dark Souls, and comes from the creator of Dark Souls, it must be Bloodborne. We play cops and robbers in Battlefield Hardline. Also this week, there's no case too big or too small for Dave Callan in a new segment. But before all that, can thou name the game for this week? Battlefield Hardline is a spin-off for the long-running shooter series and it's brought to us by Visceral Games, makers of Dead Space. Outing, Visceral have gone AWOL from the series' traditional military theme. All right, this is the one. Instead, putting us in the shoes of friendly neighborhood police officer Nick Mendoza. Mendoza! Is a fresh faced detective working his first big case, tracking down the source of cocaine that's been flooding the streets of Miami. So that coke you and started hooked came from Colombia, direct over the water. And we haven't seen that in a while. It's all. Mexican transit these days. It's nice to see Visceral doing something a bit different and trying their hands at a gritty cop drama, and they've gone all out with a TV show style presentation. Every mission is an episode, and when you quit or come back, you get the whole next time on Hardline. Next time on Hardline. And previously on. Previously on Hardline. I especially liked that intro, it reminded me of The Wire so much. Overall though, the story is pretty cliched, and I found a lot of it quite cheesy. It's the old one good cop in a world full of corruption tale. I never really warmed to any of the characters, but there's some great performance capture and solid acting. Congrats on a job well done. <sighs> Smart lady. Now I see why. Yeah, it's all a little bit predictable for sure, but I'm glad they've tried to up the quality of the campaigns because they've always been a bit underwhelming in the past. Yeah, that's true, but I think that's even more reason why they needed to knock this one out of the park, but it's full of problems. The biggest issue with the campaign is that the story gets in the way of letting you play too often. All the action is sandwiched between a lot of unskippable cutscenes and filler gameplay, like driving around a swamp for ages. <laughs> let me run over some alligators or something. Yeah, there's quite a few of those driving sections where they try to set up some really cool moment, but I always find myself just ruining it somehow. Nailed it. Shut up. I did like some of the ideas though, like how you can go in stealthily or guns blazing. Hands up. Your badge is often a far more effective weapon than any gun, letting you catch groups of three unaware baddies with a single flash. You're nicked, son. I got the other one. But without spoiling too much, around halfway through the game, you very much stop being a police officer, and yet you can still arrest people, which seemed odd to me. Put your hands up. Hey! Don't. <clears throat> He's taken the law into his own hands. And where am I getting all of these handcuffs from? It's an unlimited supply. It does seem a bit odd that all of these heavily armed thugs that usually outnumber you suddenly just drop their weapons because you shouted freeze. Freeze. Stay right where you are. What's going on? <clears throat> what the fuck? The stealth mechanics are pretty simple too. For starters, the AI is painfully oblivious, letting you arrest someone clearly within earshot of his buddy without them even noticing. Hands up. Keep them up. Whoa, whoa, you got it. 
This isn't a major criticism, but it just pulls me out of the game. You can also mark enemies with your scanner, which lets you see them and their cones of vision on your minimap. They have almost no peripheral vision though, and if you're more than about 20 meters in front of them, they won't see you. And even if they do see you, they're pretty slow on the uptake. Freeze. Don't fucking move. Wait, what? <clears throat> That's not how sight works, is it? No, not really. Stop. Enemies are also placed pretty deliberately, so you can usually see how you're supposed to move through a room arresting everyone. But in case it does get slightly complicated, you can just throw a bullet casing to lure out an enemy. And conveniently, it only draws one guy's attention at a time, so you can just kite enemies to a secluded spot to arrest them one by one. Stop. You're under arrest. You got it. You got it. But Battlefield isn't really a place for stealth anyway. My approach is much more excessive. shame there's such a big focus on stealth. The game really encourages you to play that way by giving you big rewards for arrests and no rewards for kills, making it much slower to unlock gear if you go in guns blazing. It was good to see some of the level design opening up though. Looks like there's a place to climb in on the left. There are still plenty of linear sequences, but quite often you'll find multiple paths you can take. And if you equip the grapple hook and zipline, then you can even make your own paths. Also, the series' trademark destruction makes for some tense shootouts when enemies can literally shoot their way through walls. This level design isn't as open as, say, Battlefield Bad Company's first campaign, but it's still a move in the right direction. Less linear corridors and more big battlefields for Battlefield games. Okay, man. We expected quite a lot from this campaign, as it seemed to be the primary focus of Hardline. And it didn't quite live up to all of our expectations, which is a shame. But I still enjoyed the ride hex. But let's see how the multiplayer stacks up. Woohoo! I'm the shotgun bandit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going. 125 is all I want to take. That's all I, that's all I feel safe taking. <laughs> Are you with me, Goose? Cool. Shoot Hang them. On. Hang on. RPG. Ah. Oh, go, 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 go. No! <laughs> Eat med kits. Eat them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it seems like they've walked a pretty fine line here, trying to change things up and create something new for the series, while also playing it safe and, you know, keeping it familiar for long-time fans. So much so that when we played the beta, it felt more like a substantial mod <laughs> than a separate game. It's unmistakably Battlefield, with loads of unlocks, vehicles, and destructive mayhem, but with that cops and robbers theme. Look out our suspect. Heist is the main new attraction, which has the crims trying to crack into a vault and steal the loot and get to the chopper, while the cops try and stop them. Hotwire is basically conquest on wheels, where you need to get into marked vehicles and get them up to speed to start scoring points. Blood Money is a kind of continuous spin on Capture the Flag. There's a giant pile of cash on the map that you have to get to and return to your vault. I want that vault! All while the enemy is free to raid your vault unless you protect it. They're hitting our vault! <laughs> I found this mode a bit messy, but kind of in a good way. And there are some fun times to be had, especially when you catch the enemy and they're all just at the vault and you surprise them. There's also Rescue, which is a lot like Counter-Strike's hostage mode, where everyone has one life and the cops need to rescue hostages. All units, officer and transport with a hostage. I quite liked this mode, even though there is a bit of downtime, of course. Yeah, and it's nice to have a bit of that Counter-Strike one life stress in there. Crosshair is essentially Counter-Strike's VIP mode, where the cops need to escort a VIP to an extraction zone while the crims try to take him out. But hard as we tried, we couldn't find anyone playing that mode at the time of review. Yeah, all up, I think it's a pretty good range of new modes. Yeah, me too. And it still has all of those Battlefield moments. That crane is coming down! That chaos is well and truly alive. Explosions everywhere, people parachuting out of skyscrapers, and vehicles tearing across maps. I hit a suspect! It always gets the blood pumping, although I did die a lot in Hardline. Yeah, me too, but it's always hard going early on in Battlefield before you have any unlocks. Got a band. But some modes in particular are so frustrating because it feels like you spend more time dead than alive. Medkit ready! Yeah, and I think that might turn some people off, but it also might turn some people on. Hardline has a faster, more chaotic pace. Maps tend to be more intimate and close quarters. The gunplay is more akin to Call of Duty than Battlefield. It's like a weird hybrid. Don't expect this to be about evolution. This really, for me, was all about shotguns and escape plans. 
I just don't think the extensive unlock system works for Hardline. You know, I want to get in there and play with the fun stuff and have a good time playing cops and robbers. I don't want to spend hours grinding cash for this type of game. Yeah, I get that, and I do tend to agree with you, but also those unlocks just add such longevity to a game like this, and I always miss them when they're not there. It gives you something to aim for, something new to play with each time you log in. Final thoughts, Hex? Well, I think Hardline is a solid spin-off. It's polished and thankfully free of the launch issues that plagued BF4 for like a year. But it's also kind of forgettable, so I'm giving it two and a half. Yeah, it is a bit undercooked, but you know, it's got a decent campaign and decent multiplayer, so I'm gonna give it three stars. Everything's a stopgap until Battlefront anyway. All around a decent, decent game. <laughs> you put that on the box. Decent. Decent. Baja from Good Game. Good Game, 2015, decent. I want you two to bring them in for a little chat. Sir, Mendoza's last run in the field, no offense, was a total clusterfuck. And now over to the news with Goose. Here's what's making headlines. Metal Gear creator Hideo Kojima is rumoured to be leaving Konami upon the release of Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. The rumours started when it was spotted that Konami had removed Kojima's name from all of The Phantom Pain's marketing and renamed Kojima Productions Los Angeles as Konami Los Angeles. Kojima has also been removed from a list of executive offices at the company. Both Konami and Kojima have stated that he is still 100% committed to finishing Metal Gear Solid V, but his future beyond that remains uncertain. Drive Club developer Evolution Studios has cut a significant number of staff in a recent round of layoffs. Several sources have put the number of jobs lost at 55, or roughly half of the studio. Sony confirmed that redundancies were necessary, but ensured the studio will focus on Drive Club as a service going forward, and that they remain committed to delivering the heavily delayed PlayStation Plus version of the game. Popular game streaming site Twitch has suffered a security breach. The site reset user passwords and required users to create new stream keys following detection of unauthorised access to user accounts. Users affected by the breach have been warned that their biographical information, email addresses, password and limited credit card information have been exposed. While passwords were stored cryptographically, malicious code may have been able to capture them in clear text as users logged in. And that's all for this week. Hex, you know who we haven't heard from in a while? <gasps> Dave Callan, what's he been up to? I don't know, let's find out. Hmm. Of all the dimly lit good game sets featuring a smooth jazz ensemble in the background, you had to walk into this one. Hi, I'm Dave Callan, games investigator, and have I got a story for you. A story about a chicken, a hidden chicken, a hidden golden chicken in Gears of War 3. Let's get upstairs and see what's on the desk. It's in the very first chapter of the game when Marcus is up on the deck of the ship. Hello! You can yell into all four of these large pipes by pressing X. Hello, hello, hello. And eventually, a cute, flappy chicken will appear. Shoot said chook, and it will transform into this glorious golden beast. Are you kidding me? Focus fire on the mutant. Careful of its scorching plumes. And so, Phoenix did face foul in feathery face-off. You could say it was a murder most foul. <laughs> mm. Thanks, Dave. From Hidetaka Miyazaki, the creative genius behind the Soul series, comes Bloodborne. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. <laughs> waiting for it to end. It always does. Always has, you know. Since forever.
In Bloodborne, you play a hunter in a Van Helsing-like world full of lycanthropic beasts and demonic creatures. After a bit of character customization, I went for a creepy Sonic this time. No! Bajo, for the sake of this review, and I think everyone watching at home, can we just go with my character for the gameplay footage? No, gotta go fast. The hunt is on. begins, you awaken to a strange dream hub world and soon learn you're part of a long line of hunters. Your job is to fight back the beasts while the townsfolk lock themselves inside. So what is it now? I've much better ways to pass the time. I quite liked this mythology, Bajo, so I was keen to see what kind of world they created using it. Yeah, there's a lot they can explore with this setting and it's all delightfully creepy. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. As a disclaimer, we're only about 20 hours into Bloodborne, so there's still much we have to discover about the game in general. Baja, this is developed by From Software, so naturally I expected Bloodborne to share a few ideas with the Souls games, but I don't think I quite expected it to be this similar. Yeah, there's a fair bit of copy and paste, isn't there? But you know what, Hex? I'm fine with it. When game design is this good, copy and paste as much as you like. <laughs> The controls are nearly identical. There's creepy cryptic NPCs. Tell them about this here Erden Chapel, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> Co-op and invasions, brutally tough enemies, nasty dogs, swinging blades, shinies everywhere just begging you to collect them, giant rats, and so many barrels. Hex, I think the next-gen hardware has allowed them to up the number of barrels and pots you can roll into this time around. Oh, well, the future really is here. In fact, Bloodborne has so many similar systems and ideas that we're going to look at it as more of a sort of spiritual successor sequel alternate universe game to mm. Dark Souls. And just like the Souls series, it is brutally difficult. There is no safety net. You're thrust into this world with only a handful of gear and then it's up to you to find the path of least resistance. This is a delightful journey of death and fear. As you walk about learning enemy movesets and the best way to take them down, you constantly build this imaginary map in your mind of the zone you're in. I love that initial discovery process, Hex, and all the levels seem to interlock and interconnect, much like with Dark Souls 1, but not like Dark Souls 2, and I think we've got Miyazaki's guidance over this game to thank for that. It's quite stressful, though, trying to figure out where to go, isn't it? Mm. You never really know if you're heading the right way, and there's always a couple of paths ahead of you. But then that's half the fun, isn't it? Just testing the waters and finding little shortcuts. There'll be blocked sections that you keep in the back of your mind and NPCs that'll give you tasks. Yes, and then you find those zones where the enemies are so tough that they're taking you out in just one or two hits and you think to yourself, okay, maybe this zone is a problem for future me. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the combat. It's a mix of light and heavy attacks, drop downs, plus a charged heavy attack, which makes timing very important. Hitboxes are perfect, so if an enemy swings at you and the weapon goes over your head, it won't hit you. And I think that's actually the key to what makes this combat so engaging. Yeah, I agree. The biggest difference in this combat compared to the Souls games is that this is much more aggressive. In Souls games, fights can be long, slow-paced duels with a sword and a shield where two heavily armoured warriors slowly pick away at each other. There are shields in Bloodborne, but the one I have found is pretty useless. This is all about dodging and hitting back as fast as possible. One, two, one, two. It's such a change of pace. You can't wait for opportunity now, you just have to get in there and fight. It makes each encounter something that you have to totally work yourself up for and then jump in head first. It's also reinforced by a unique damage reward system. It works like this. When you take damage and lose health, you have a very short window of time, seconds even, to get it back. And you do this by doing damage to any enemy. 
So this makes fights less of a duel and more of a boxing match. Yeah, it works so well, doesn't it? And I love when you're locked onto an enemy. Instead of rolling, you can end up doing a fancy dash. It's a stylish way to fight, and it makes sense for the hunters. It's also different enough that you have plenty to learn. Yeah, it took me a long time to get the hang of it, but now I crave those fights. There's no more endless circling around, fishing for backstabs. It's all about staggering your enemy at the right time and knowing when to back off and regain some stamina. In fact, I think stamina is the most important stat you can pump points into. Yet weapons are interesting too, for a few reasons. In your left hand, you can hold a torch or this pointless shield, but the most important left-hand weapons are guns. Time them right as an enemy is attacking and you can knock them to their knees, which allows you a brief moment for a brutal and devastating attack. This stun move is kind of like the difficult repost move from the Souls games and almost as hard to pull off. And when things go bad, it's very bad. Guns can also be used to bait enemies and get their attention, or to stop charging foes. I like the guns, but I wish how they worked was a bit more interesting. Yeah, there isn't a huge amount of variety in other weapons either. Although, the weapons you do have can transform. I love this so much. Everything about transforming is brilliant. There's even a cane that becomes a whip. Yeah, it's great. And each form works better against different enemies, too. A press of a button and a blade can become a spear. An axe can become a two-hander. A sword can slide into a stone mallet. I mean, it must have been a tricky thing to balance, but I think they've nailed it. Yeah, and there isn't a huge amount of weapons for you to choose from, but I actually don't mind that because it means you get to nail down the strategy for each one. There's less gear to muck around with as well, so far, but once again, it's nice not having to spend so much time with item and weight management. You can just chuck on a top hat and get down to business. When you die, you drop your blood echoes. This is the game's currency, like the souls in Souls. But in a devilish twist, when you return to the place you fell, they won't always be on the ground. They can actually be absorbed by an enemy. It raises the stakes, doesn't it? It means you can't just run in there and grab your echoes and get to safety. You have to fight. It makes the fights genuinely terrifying. Yeah, this is a really terrifying game at times, especially when you're low on health and you're out of health files and really far away from a respawn point. Yeah, and those respawn lanterns are so few and far between, you really have to work to light one. Oh, and the bosses, I mean, they just appear. The only real way you have any idea if you're about to start a boss fight is if the room seems just a little bit too big. And then suddenly, health bar and it's on. So mean. I know. Now, Bajo, you've obviously put quite a lot of time into the Souls games because you go on about them a lot. I love them so much. Like, all the time. They're so good. <laughs> I haven't become quite as obsessed with them as you, mostly because I get frustrated by the constant and humiliating death. Death is your reward. That doesn't mean I don't appreciate their unique design and ideas. Far from it. But I guess my question to you is, as a mega fan, do you think this is too much of a clone? Well, I see the Souls games as more like a genre now, and so this is just another flavour of ice cream. <laughs> Bring on the clones. I think we'll only see more of this type of game now because it resonates so much with those who revel in this huge challenge for tiny but delectable rewards. You know, there is so much to like about this game, Bajo. They've made so many wonderful tweaks and choices with the combat, but even still, I just... I don't feel like I'm enjoying it. And I put that down mostly to the location and area design, not so much the difficulty. Each zone is designed differently and the enemy setups are unique, but so much of it just looks the same and I find that repetitive and really draining. Yeah, it's pretty grey. Oh, so grey. I just need a little bit of variety, especially when I'm in so much pain. It's actually one of the things that sort of stopped me from wanting to go back into this world. No. 
But don't you agree though? I mean, around every corner, it's just more graveyards and churches. Sometimes the graveyards have a bit of grass on them. <laughs> I do agree with you though. Be sold over the shop. I think the law they've built around this world might have limited their creativity with its design. I just keep waiting for that big reveal where I turn a corner or open a door and it's a brand new area and it just hasn't happened yet. And the Souls games do that constantly. Yeah, I mean, look, to be fair, we could encounter some of that later on, but I think it's still a fair criticism considering how far we are into this already. I do like reviewing and playing these games just as they've come out though, Hex, because there's no guides to tempt you, nothing to help you. <laughs> We still have no idea how some of the systems even work, and it's fun trying to discover their importance. This game is full of little secrets. Yeah, like that weird frenzy light which summons this guy. Oh, what the hell, game? Yeah, that guy's a jerk. There's also a beast system of some sort and an insights counter, which reminds me of humanity a little. What's really interesting about them is that as far as I can tell, they change enemy patterns, placements, and even some of the weapons they use depending on your insight level. And there are ways to make this go up and down. Yeah, the first time you see one of those bag men in a place where they're not supposed to be, it's quite confronting. the bag men. Yeah, me too. They're so tough and I can only assume that their bag is full of gross body parts. Sadly, at the time of reviewing, we couldn't test out the online functionality of this game. And that's a big part of it. There'll be messages left on the ground, invasions, co-op. So we'll try and do an update soon. Maybe on Pocket, our daily show, which you can watch on iView and YouTube daily. We also only had a quick go through one of the chalice challenges, which are procedurally generated dungeon crawls. It was tough and just a whole other thing that we need to explore later. But for now, Hex, based on what we've played so far, how do you feel about Bloodborne overall? Uh, stressed. Uh, mostly in a good way. It's just those fights, Barjo. It's hard for me to find a good balance of enjoyment. Yeah, I don't think you'll be alone in that. Even so, I think any game that can make you sit up and pay attention and focus like Bloodborne does is tapping into something a bit magical. You may think it all a mere bad dream. And I know at the end of the year I'm going to look back and go, what was my top three games for the year? Oh yeah, Bloodborne's definitely in there, even with the issues I have. I'm giving it four stars. It's three stars from me. away for a long time. Or oh, make that all go away. I'm listening. You played me, you played me right from the start, Hex. Well, of course I did. You know you won't get away with this. I'll never stop chasing you. That's the game, Goose. You finally guessed it. It was Police Quest in Pursuit of the Death Angel from 1987. You played as Sonny Bonds, a cop who stumbles across a homicide when assigned to traffic duty. Building your career through narcotics and undercover, you set out to bring down a drug king known as the Death Angel. And it's our Name the Game this week because it was one of the first ever video games to really try to make you feel like a cop. Kind of the opposite from this week's Battlefield Hardline. Oh, and fun fact, a Police Quest was made by a real-life policeman by the name of Jim Walls. Mm. Next week on the show, we build a metropolis and watch it crumble before us in City's skyline. And we have a first play of Final Fantasy XV. No big deal. Until next time, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Barjo out.